Our decision to choose Ghana for the film was less about familiarity and more about the fact that when we first went there, the people and uh, the colors and the joy really was so real and so overwhelming and it was such a positive experience. That, that was something we really wanted to capture and emulate in this film and then bring back home and show people who had been unable to see that firsthand. Like, it is crazy how, uh, how the parts that are our favorite are like the most stressful parts of the whole process. Yeah, for sure. Like when we were filming, I remember being sick while we were filming. <laughs> And just, there's nothing, I couldn't, I didn't want to get out of bed, I didn't want to do anything, but like, we were only there for a limited amount of time, so you just have to go, 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 which yeah. is kind of uh, interesting. I mean, we certainly had never, had never experienced the 12 hour days in the Ghanaian heat. And humidity is not nice to him. No. The language barrier was definitely an issue for us because since the village is so remote and uh, there's not a lot of English speaking that goes on there, a lot of times the people that we were interviewing were actually not fluent in English at all. And so we would often have um, a local Ghanaian with us who could translate for us. And so this was something that we kind of had to adjust to as we uh, as we saw the answers we were getting as we prepared for each interview. We we really needed to to address this. And how long have you lived in Tokyo, Tokyo? I've been here Overall, I think we were able to work around it and uh, and make the most of it because thankfully we had translators who were who were very fluent in English and uh, could convey what we wanted to ask and could convey the answers that they gave us and that was certainly important to the outcome of the piece. When we returned from the production in Ghana, the workload of post-production was so much more than we anticipated, I can hardly express it. We came back with about 30 hours of footage and, and this was something that we tackled through um, many, many hours of, of logging all of the footage, organizing it, talking really, really in depth about what we wanted to cut, what we wanted to keep, and how we were going to approach um, making this film. I mean, of course, trying to figure out how this whole film would come together with all the crazy amount of footage that we got was beyond stressful. I remember several times Skyping and just not even <laughs> talking over Skype, just simply stress, stressing. <laughs> The more we could focus in on, on a character or two or a family or um, something that was very personable and less broad, the more it felt relatable, the more real it felt. I think being from Montana has made this process a lot easier on us because since things like this aren't happening as often in Montana, like the community is like really supportive of it when it is happening. And I know that like even the smallest things like organizing the premiere and everything have been have been like so given to us by other people and so donated and people have been so generous about it all. Like I just don't see that happening in a bigger city where film is more prominent and everyone's competing. You know, everyone here has just been like really supportive and I'm thankful for that. Yeah. We got our funding or our majority of our funding through Kickstarter and I remember another extremely stressful moment was we were afraid that we weren't going to reach our goal which means that we wouldn't get the money that we wanted so we immediately started looking for grants and then that's when the montana film office big sky grant popped up and um right. yeah yeah they reached out to us because they saw um a story in the local newspaper about us and they called me and inquired about our project a little bit and honestly they've been so they've been so like easy to work with throughout this whole thing and helpful and just kind of catering to our timeline and everything, it's been really great. It's definitely safe to say that without the positive support of the community, there's just no way that this film could have happened at all. Um, the entire budget was, was you know, gifted to us through, through the, the people that supported us and uh, the people who you know, saw how passionate we were about making this, this vision of ours happen and we're willing to put money towards that cause and we're really thankful for that because there is just no way that we could have done it on our own. Today we have a 
deleted scene from the film that although it wasn't able to make the final cut is actually very special to us and uh, we wanted to share it with you so take a look What I can what I can say is you only have to be one another skipper. You have, you take one to be your brother, the other to be your sister, and whatever that is affecting the other, you believe is affecting you, and that is the only way that you can grow. You take your brother's children as your own, your cousins, your extended families as your own. You give the advice that you are supposed to do, and trust you me, uh, when he is happy, you are happy. So equally, there will be there will be. Uh, oneness, there'll be, I mean, all what you need is to care for one another. That is what I think could, could bring such unity and such love in the community, as we are experiencing the Kufi Atapa.